Hi, this is Adam McCurdy with Xenos. Today I'm going to talk about the Nagios parser. Zen Command is a daemon that uh, comes with Xenos out of box. It's part of our normal set of collector daemons. It's one of the most uh, popular and widely used collector daemons. It retrieves data by running commands, normally either remote SSH commands or commands local to the collector where Zen Command's running. Um, but after Zen Command runs those commands, it needs a way to parse the output into something usable. So, you know, does Zend Command need to raise an event? Are there data points that need to be stored? Uh, that's where parsers come in. So a parser consumes the return of a command and returns it into something the resource manager can use. Uh, Zend Command comes with several different parsers, and we may cover some more of those in a future video. Uh, but the most commonly used is, uh, is probably the Nagios parser. If you're writing a script uh, to check the health of something or gather data about a system, or then you need to make a decision about how you're going to parse that data and get it into Xenos, you know, either in the form of events or performance data or both. So an easy, straightforward solution would be to write your script such that it kind of conforms to the rules of the Nagios parser. Um, so let's let's talk about those rules a little bit. In this example, you can see some output from the check HTTP Nagios plugin. The Nagios parser would handle this plugin first by finding the pipe in the middle. And it would basically say everything to the left of this pipe is my summary. And everything to the right of the pipe uh, are my data points in key value format. So it also takes a look at the the exit code and we'll talk about that here in just a second when i show you a chart but this is what the nagios parser is going to turn this output into so it's going to look at the exit code Let's say for this we got an exit code of zero we got a summary and then we got a couple of different data points so now i'm looking at the resource manager admin guide and there's this table in here that'll help you map the exit codes for your your scripts or your Nagios plugins to the the Nagios equivalent of them on the right so this is kind of the way that Nagios handles these things and then this is what we do in resource manager in the middle so if it's a zero the exit code on a, on a script or a command is a is a zero and you're using the Nagios parser then we'll create a clear event if it's a exit status one then we'll use whatever severity is on the data source if it's an exit status two then we'll use the the severity on the data source, but inc you know increment it by one. So if it's say it's a warning, then you'll get an error. If it's an error, you'll get a critical. Um, and, and if the exit status is three, then we just use whatever's on the uh, on the data source. So if you're writing a script and you want to use the Nagios plugin, uh, or rather the Nagios parser, to take your data and put it in the form of events and performance data, um, then you, you need to understand these mappings so you can know how to write your script so you can have it exit the right way uh, to do, you know, depending on what you want to do. So let's put it to use. Here I've just got a local template on a device. I'm going to add a data source and we're going to find our command data source. I'm going to just call it Nagios example. And see, we'll have, we just have a blank data source here with no data points on it. So we can double click it and give it a command. And this is just a, a command that I was playing with earlier. But for parser, we want to choose Nagios. If we have auto selected, then it'll try, uh, basically it'll try to make sense of it. Um, but if for for best results you want to try to set the parser that you know the command template is going to be able to use so we know that the check http script returns data in Nagios format so we'll just use that so i'll just i'm going to call this status http and save it and if you remember the example from earlier we had a time and size data points there. So if we wanted to store those 
then we need to have corresponding data points. Well, that about covers it. I hope you learned something about the NaGeo's command parser. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.